Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm at a BMW event checking out the new BMW X1. I've also been filming the BMW iX1 so if you guys wanted to see the full electric variant then that will be over on Electroheads. But today we're looking at the combustion engine car. This is now the third generation of BMW X1 and it's always been an absolute staple for BMW. It's a great way of getting that practicality and the decent BMW badge, but for not too much of an expensive price. But what has actually changed? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's video. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then hit the subscribe button. As previously mentioned, the X1 will now appear in full electric, labelled as the iX1, but there will also be a diesel, petrol and plug-in hybrid versions. In fact, it all gets a little bit complicated, try to keep up. The entry-level cheapest car is a front-wheel drive 2-litre petrol, labelled the S-Drive 20i. It has a respectable output of 170 brake horsepower. There's also a slightly slower 150 brake horsepower diesel available, named the S-Drive 18D. BMW expects the hybrid to be the most popular version. The entry-level X-Drive 25e gets a 48 volt setup, all-wheel drive, a punchy 245 brake horsepower and an impressive range of around 50 miles. Moving up the trim levels unlocks more powerful engines, including petrols labelled the X-Drive 23i with 218 brake horsepower and a more powerful 211 brake horsepower X-Drive 23D diesel. The most powerful and most expensive model is an X-Drive 30e with a whopping 326 brake horsepower. The BMW X1 at first glance looks quite different and it's going to divide opinions as it always does. Maybe I've just gotten used to the massive grille that they've put on the iX, but I actually think this looks okay. It's not too bad. It's certainly not as big as you get on the iX, but it maybe might not be to everybody's taste, but I think it actually looks quite handsome. I'm not too sure about this green paintwork. Looks good under the trees, but to me personally, I think it makes it look a little bit like the old person spec, do not tell BMW that I said that. But what do you guys think of this green paintwork? The model that I have here is the mid of the range. This is the X line. So it fits above the Sport model, but below the M Sport. It gets things like LED headlamps. It also gets heated seats, but it does miss out on some of the goodies, which I'll explain a little bit later on. It also gets 18 inch wheels as standard. If you go for the entry level sport model, these start at 17s. And I don't know about you guys, but personally, I think that's just a little bit small for this type of car. This third generation car has now increased in size and height compared to the second generation. It's now 44 millimeters taller and it's also 53 millimeters longer. So that gives you more interior space and also more boot space as well. Where inside you'll now find 540 litres in the combustion car and 500 in the hybrid. All versions of the X1 also get an electric boot, super handy. And that's not just where the practicality ends because you also get a flush boot floor, which is nice for loading items in and some underfloor storage too. Although you can't drop down the floor. So it's not the best for loading items, but it is good if you want to hide them away. You also get a three-way split rear seat as well. So that's really practical and much better than a lot of rivals. Now, here is one of my favorite things about this car and it's the back. To start with, I wasn't too sure how I felt about this split in it, but actually now I love it. I think it looks very aggressive, angular, and it's also split up by those 3D lights, which I love. And on the side of these lights, you have these little triangle details etched into them. And that is also mirrored onto the interior. There is no doubt about it. The X1 has extremely good interior quality, especially compared to some of the less premium rivals from the Volkswagen group. Everything is really soft to the touch. You've got these really nice leather sports seats. And although they're not real leather, 
these do come in the full range of X1s, which I think is really impressive. You've got this new floating console, which looks really lovely. And you've got just a nice mix of materials. You've got this nice leather wrapped topped dashboard. You've got some chrome along the middle, which has some ambient lighting. And you've also got this gloss black underneath. I am really quite smitten by this car. I love the new two screens, they look brilliant. The double curved display is extremely clear and simple to use, which is just as well, as there's now no longer an iDrive scroller in the centre console. Highlights are the 360 degree camera, which displays the car in the same colour as the physical car itself, and the drive modes which change the whole car's ambience, which is pretty awesome. The one thing that I don't like is this steering wheel. In a car which feels very modern, very aggressive, very angular, this steering wheel just seems way too round to me. But you can tell by the fact that the only problem that I have with this car is the steering wheel is too round, means that it's very, very good. Also, remember I said about those little details which are etched into the lights? They actually are mirrored onto the interior as well. You've got a little bit of etching on the dashboard. You've also got etching on your speakers and you've got little etching down here as well. It all just is very cohesive, very flowing. It looks truly wonderful. I really like the door handles as well, the way they're floating. And then you've got these little door handles, door latches here. Yeah, it all just feels very premium, but also not boring. It's all very interesting. There's things to look at. You've got these diamond parts up here for your lights. It's very, very nice BMW. I am quite impressed. And lastly, something else I love again is this wireless charging pad. It's actually in a vertical position. And once you pop your phone in there, it looks really smart. And I really like the way it's got ambient lighting behind there as well, so it glows. It just all looks very, very lovely. As family cars go, the X1 is extremely practical. I've got loads of space in the back here. Now the X1 is the smallest SUV that BMW does, so you can't expect it to be groundbreaking, but it is very, very good. I've got a decent amount of legroom, and I've also got a really good amount of headroom, even with a panoramic sunroof. I also have the optional sliding rear bench, which makes it super practical, but probably not necessarily needed. Although all versions of the X1 do get, if I can find it, the reclining seats. So you can change the seats to either have them in a nice and reclined position, or you can have them in a more upright position and get a tad more boot space. It's also really practical that it's got hard plastic rear seats, so they're wipeable. And also you've got two USB-C charge ports and underneath there, you've got a tiny extra bit of storage. The new X1 just feels a lot more premium and a lot more grown up. It feels higher quality and also the drive just feels a bit more solid. But once again, I am driving the X-Drive variant and I think that's always going to improve the drive of the X1. It's gonna make it feel much more planted, far more solid, especially on a rainy day like today. So of course, I probably will like this version a bit better than if you had the old variants, which were two wheel drive in some instances. It is really easy to fall in love with all of the gadgets that you get on the X1, but then I do have to remember that a lot of them are not standard. So this car has a rather expensive driver aid package, which gives you the head up display. You also get the augmented reality sat nav and you get adaptive cruise control, all very, very cool gadgets. But yet some of these things I really would hope would be standard. For example, I really would hope that adaptive cruise control was standard and you didn't have to pay for it. The sat nav is ultra cool. Of course, I don't expect that to be standard, but I really do love it. Especially for someone who's very good visually and not necessarily by following written orders, I find it great because it gives me visual representation of where I need to go, very, very handy. The head up display is also nice and clear. Now, BMW have defended the fact that they've removed the scroller for the iDrive by bringing the screen closer to you. 
And it's a bit of a strange one because I love the scroller. It made it individual to BMW, so it's a shame that they've decided to remove that. However, the screen is really easy to use. You can play around with the widget so you can have it suited to you. And also you do have some shortcut buttons down the bottom, including your modes. And there's also a function which will change you straight to your driving functions as well. So you can play around with the chassis, the driver's assistance. These are really handy to have. It may not be as easy to use without the scroller, but I can't see it being too much of a problem. It's a really comfortable car to drive. It feels well planted on the road. And of course, because it has that X drive, even in this rain, it's sticking very well and it's cornering pretty well as well. But it's not an engaging sporty drive and you have to remember that. Sometimes with the M Sport looks, you think that this car is gonna be slightly more engaging than it actually is. Don't get me wrong though, it's very good at what it's made for. It's a fantastic family car. It's really comfortable and it feels secure on the road. It's just not necessarily that engaging. I genuinely think that the new X1 has seriously been improved over the previous generation. I actually think it has some quite handsome looks. I love that rear styling. And for me, as not a BMW fan, that's saying something. And it still has all of that practicality, in fact, even more than ever. And the quality really is super high compared to the rest of its competitors. But what do you guys think? Do you like the new X1? Or perhaps you preferred the previous generation? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos from me, then hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later.